Welcome back, my name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I have an awful, garbage, filthy mouth where sometimes, I tend to use the word fuck as a comma. I know. It's erotic. If you're not into that or weird stuff in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to exit out the video here. No harm, no foul, but I'll remember our Tom fondly. Y'all, I'm excited for today's video. We're gonna be doing a classic fun size review, except these products actually have been out for a hot June bug minute. Hot June bug minute. That sounds like it's a fun thing. Minnesotans, is that a thing? Probably not. I probably offended people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> anyway, we're doing a fun size review where I'm going to be talking about one, two, three, four, five products. Five products. And these products have been out for a hot men. And I am just late to the game. It is what it is, Susan. Okay, we're just gonna have to deal with it. So hopefully this review will serve of some purpose. Uh, if not, whatever. We have a lot, we have a lot to talk about. We have the Mac Harris Reed collection. I know that thing that I lusted over many, many months ago. I have it, which actually I only have two out of the three in the collection. We have the fantasy palette from Game Beauty. I have the little Patrick Ta blibbity blop blop and the Wayne Goss blibbity blop blop. So why don't we talk about eyeshadow palettes first and then we'll finish with the um, these bubbies, okay? That sounds good, right? There are three things in this collection. You have an eyeshadow palette, you have a cream color based duo thingy, and then you have an eyeliner pencil. I didn't pick up the eyeliner pencil because I was like, eh, eh. I didn't want it. So let's talk about the eyeshadow palette first. This is the Fighting for the Beauty of Fluidity. This is a limited edition eye palette featuring waves of rich golds, heated hues, and amplified earth tones that's housed in this gilded, renaissance inspired looking packaging. Okay, first and foremost, the packaging, fuck me sideways, okay? Seriously, spin me around, fuck me sideways. This is beautiful. I know, I know. I feel like I kind of often say like, oh my God, this is like the most opulent thing, like, Ugh. and I love it. This though, this takes the fucking cake. This is beautiful. I didn't even give a shit what the color story looked like because I was like, oh, I got to have you. And I did, I purchased it, I'm happy. The artwork is just beyond unique. It's a true statement piece and will always look good forever and ever and ever in back yonder behind me next to my son over here. Hi, baby. Anyway, the thing that bothers me the most about this palette is that it's plastic and it almost feels offensive. <laughs> this is so beautiful. Why, why is it plastic? I wish this was metal. I wanna be able to throw this at somebody and give them a light concussion. Who am I kidding? I wanna put them in a coma. But that's besides the point. For a moment like this, how can you fuck it up with plastic? Like. Really? And I'm sure it's probably an environmentally conscious decision to do it, but when you know something looks good in metal, fucking put it in metal. <laughs> I don't even care if that makes the palette $20 more, I will happily pay for it. Why? Because it's coming into the coffin with me, okay? But plastic, this is not even gonna make it after the first 20 years. Ugh. Anyway. Ironically enough, it probably will. Doesn't plastic like last forever? Google. Does plastic last forever? All right, I'm getting sidetracked here. Anyway, I really hate the feel of the palette. It actually cheapens it. So as beautiful as this is, it just feels really cheap in hand. Anyway, I'm gonna shut the fuck up about it. In this little nine pan palette, you get two matte shades and the remaining seven are either a luster or a frost finish. And honestly, I just can't even tell the difference between the two. When I first got the palette, based on swatches, I was completely underwhelmed and I immediately wrote it off, which was really shitty on my part because swatches never tell the full story. That said, when I actually did get to try the palette, I like it. Is this the best palette I've ever tried? Absolutely not. Is it the worst? No. It's somewhere in the middle. It's one of those middle palettes where it's like, you're not mad that you have it, but you probably didn't have to pay full price for it. You know what I mean? It falls right there. Both mattes in this palette are incredibly pigmented, easy to use, and they blend effortlessly. I didn't experience any patchiness, balding, or fallout when using these shades. My only complaint is that I wish there were more of them in the palette. I think having two was like, not enough. 
And if they were to add another matte in this palette, I wish it was a darker brown or black shade. That is something this palette lacks because the darkest shade in this palette technically is like this black shade over here with sparkles on it. Unfortunately, it's an explosion of glitter bukkake and it's just, not what I'm looking for. Now for the shimmers, I think there are some that are better than others. For the most part, most of them applied very well with glitter glue. There were some that did require to be built up. I didn't experience any cracking or fading or any texture or sensitivity issues. No spicy butthole here. I will say that there is a fair amount of glitter bukkake when using these shades. So I recommend doing your eye makeup first and then your base because these little bastards are very, 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 very difficult to clean. And kind of going back to the darkest shade in this palette, this was probably my least favorite because it's not black. It's actually more of a dark gray, kind of like a soot charcoal kind of color. And there's just an explosion of sparkles. No matter how dainty you are when you use it, it's bam, glitter bukkake all over your face. And with that, I have to look at other palettes just to complete the look. So I feel like I can't really create a lot of dimension, especially if I'm relying on the darkest shade in this palette. Now this palette retails for $33. And while the artwork is absolutely fucking stunning, I think what bugs me the most is that you don't get a mirror in these palettes. I wish there was another matte shade. While the color story is very, very pretty, it's not really revolutionary by any means. It's just a warm tone palette with a pop of green instead of blue. You have purchased a similar palette in your collection a thousand times over. And so while the quality is solid, this is not something that you really need to get unless it was on sale. So for 33, eh, I would skip. But if you find it in the 20s, yeah, totally worth having. So the next thing in this collection is the Cream Color Base Times 2 Embrace Your Duality. A limited edition duo of creamy colors for the face housed in this gilded renaissance inspired packaging. So this retails for $25. Look how incre- I mean, granted, I do have like man hands. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie there. I have big old fucking catcher mitts, okay? But seriously though, I was like, oh my god. I, <laughs> I felt like King Kong. I was like, oh, me need to put on blush. King Kong doesn't talk. That would explain why there were so many planes shooting at me. Anyway, this is $25. This is fucking tiny. Tiny, tiny. But again, artwork, fucking stunning. Absolutely fucking stunning. I'm gonna be very, very brief about this particular product. I can't wear it. The shades just don't work for me. This is meant for someone who doesn't look like a deep sea fish, okay? Anybody else. So while I don't mind the formula, it's fucking horrendous on me. The blush is a beautiful wine color that even with the smallest amount of product, I look like someone slapped me. The formula feels nice, easy to blend. It's just too opaque for my ass. I would be interested in trying other shades in this formula. Now for the highlighter, it's not my favorite type of formula. I think for cream highlighter, lighters, no one can be ritual to fay. They just can't. With that said, the formula for one was way too dark for me. Two, I really don't like how I couldn't move the formula around. I felt like as soon as I placed it down, it just stayed there like cement. It dried down and it is what it is. So you have to almost work supersonic speed, I felt like when using it, because even for a quick second, I was like, fuck, I can't blend it out. Three, it takes up the product that's underneath it. So even if you just have a cream base, you didn't use any powder or anything like that, it still takes up the primer, the foundation, the concealer, everything. It just takes it all up. And then you just notice these giant holes, but glitter bukkake inside of them. It's really fucking disturbing actually. And four, this is straight up glitter bukkake, like straight up. And I usually can manage, but not with this shit. This is just next level, like sludge Resident Evil, the village kind of a thing. Like I just wasn't having it. It was just too, too sludgy for me. Perhaps there are other products within this formula that are better. And maybe it's just the gold. I don't really know, but just kind of based off this experience, it makes me not want to try their cream highlighters, but their cream blushes, absolutely. Or a cream color base, whatever the fuck they call it. I don't, whatever. Anyway, so if you are interested with this, again, kind of proceed with caution. It may or may not work for you. And probably the best thing out of this is the blush. Yeah, I wish this worked out better for me. That aside, I'm not mad that I had this in my collection. I definitely think the packaging for me is the biggest selling point of it because it's just so aesthetically pleasing. But if you were to get anything, out of this collection. I definitely think there's a lot of versatility with the eyeshadow palette. Well, again, it's not the most revolutionary thing. It's a solid fucking color story. This is just, I, I think this is meant for a specific person and I'm just not that person. So anyway, uh, let's move on to Game Beauty. So this is the 
fantasy palette from Game Beauty. I love Game Beauty. I initially tried them not so long ago when they came out with their first product, the Adventure Palette. And if you are interested in seeing that video, I'll link it up in the corner there. I have been eagerly awaiting for them to release another product because in that Adventure Palette, there was a pesky motherfucking pressed glitter, which I am just not a fan of. I just don't want to blind myself. I don't care what you say if things are safe. To me, they're not, but I digress. Anyway, I'm very happy to report that this brand does listen to feedback, which not a lot of brands do. Sorry to say, but they don't. <laughs> and they do, and I really appreciate that. A lot of people express their concern about having a pressed glitter in a palette, and lo and behold, they were like, hey, from this day forward, we will never release another pressed glitter. No more salt in your eyeballs. And everybody rejoiced, and we all had a good time. But before I jump into this review, full transparency, this palette was sent to me in PR, so thank you, Game Beauty. And I do have an affiliate code. And if you do use the affiliate code, yes, I do get a small kickback. So if you are ever interested in trying one of their products, whether it's one of the two palettes or a future product from the brand, please remember to use the code garbage to save 10% off your order. Again, don't feel obligated. It's there if you want to use it or plenty of my fellow colleagues on YouTube also have codes. So support the channel you want to support. I don't really give a shit, but just save yourself some fucking money, okay? Anyway, so this palette retails for $45. This palette consists of five mattes, one pressed pigment, two chameleons, one shimmer, one pearl drop, and a partridge in a pear tree. This packaging does not disappoint. As a video game lover, I am fucking obsessed with it. And I have to say between this and the Mac, it's like, ugh, fucking packaging galore over here. When looking at this palette, I'm ready to start my own RPG adventure where I am battling demons as well as my daddy issues. Ironically enough, they are the same thing. <laughs> Hmm. Anyway, the packaging is stunning. You get a nice little mirror and this very pretty, very spring color story. So let's talk about the mattes first. Since this is a pastel color story, what you see in pan is literally how it's gonna look on the eyes. If you're trying to get any more richer than this, it's just not possible. There is a fair amount of pigmentation when applying these shadows, but you do need to build them up to get a fuller opacity and it's just because they're pastels. But I will say I have used pastels in the past where I just felt like I was literally layering on 55 fucking pounds of makeup on my face to have something show up. This, at least upon initial application, is probably like 60 to 70% pigmented and just only requires a little bit more just to be built up. I found the mattes to be more on the powdery side, so I did experience a fair amount of kick up and fallout when using these shades. But I'm happy to say that the fallout is very, very easy to clean with a large powder brush. I just do this and poof, I am good to go. What is nice about these shades, in my opinion, is that these are more of like a watercolor moment. So if you wanted to dip your toes into more daring shades, this is a really nice option, especially if you don't want something that is a little bit more neon because sometimes pastels can be more on like the neon spectrum. They're not always my favorite. Sometimes I kind of just want like a nice like soft moment and maybe it's because I'm gonna be on the other side of 35 and I'm just going towards my namesake. Okay, I get it. All right, I feel it in the air tonight. Uh, all right, sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what the fuck was I saying? I forgot what I was saying, God damn it. Moral of the story, sometimes it's really nice to kind of have like a softer moment instead of a neon moment. Anyway, I found these colors blended really beautifully together. I didn't experience any patchiness or balding or fading when using these shades, which is really nice because usually with pastel colors or neon colors in particular, I usually deal with some sort of balding aspect, but I didn't. The longevity is great. And I love that I was able to create like really beautiful, like soft, pastel gradients when using these shades. Now there is a pressed pigment in this palette. We got it right here. Little dreamland, little Kirby dreamland over here, okay? And there is some staining that does get left behind, unfortunately. So much so that some people will ask you if somebody farted on your pillow, so just heads up there. The other shade in this palette that I want to point out is Mage, which is this boy right here. This is a cool tone mauve purple color that I wish was just, just a little bit darker, just so that I can add a little bit more dimension in the looks, just like to deepen the outer corner or deepen the crease. It does it a little bit, but just not to where I want it to be. I wish the purple was just a little bit more deeper in this palette. Surprisingly enough, the blue shades were fantastic and I didn't experience any staining. Ironically enough, I feel like with blue, for the most part, I get some sort of staining, but these were absolutely perfect. And the blues were my favorite part of this whole palette. As for the shimmer shades, I definitely think Buff, which is more of like a satin shimmer shade. And then you have the shade Mana, which is the pearl drop shade. Very, very pretty. It's like a nice deep blue, but there is moments of like pure silver in there. It gives the eye a little bit more pop, which I like. Both of those shades blended together just creates this really beautiful, like oceanic deep gradient. I fucking love it. The shade Ethereal is really nice. However, it's definitely on the thinner side. So it does require to be built up. But the shift is really beautiful once built up. However, there is a fair amount of glitter bukkake when using that shade, so make sure 
to wear protection. Now there's one shade in this palette that I fucking, I do, I do, I do not like it. I don't like it. It's messy. And it's the shade Celestial. This shade had so much glitter bukkake that I'm pretty sure that I'm glitter pregnant. And yes, I do have a registry. It's at Joann's Fabrics, link in the description below. This shade, no matter what the fuck I did, just exploded all over my face. It's an interesting shade because it's kind of very similar to Ethereal. It's on the thinner side. It does require to be built up, but for whatever reason, I could build up Ethereal. I just cannot build up Celestial. It's like just not possible. When I would use Celestial all over the lid, I definitely saw my lid poking through and it just, I don't know, just didn't look right. It looked kind of a little bit patchy. And, but the more that I would add, the more the glitter would explode. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And no matter what I did, it, it literally, somebody just glitter bombed me in the face. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? So I think the best use for this shade is simply ever so gingerly take your finger, just get a little bit of product, gently tap the middle of your lid and walk away. Don't do anything else. Don't try to blend it, just let it be. And if you do that, then it's fine. It's when you do anything else, it's like, whoosh, you're done, you're dead. <laughs> I hope in the future that the chameleon shades are a little less explodey because they're a really cool concept. It's just that celestial shade just, I, uh, I can't even use it as a highlighter. It's just too much glitter bukkake. I'm having twins, I can't. Overall, this was a really cool palette and I really appreciate the softness of the shades. This is something different than what I have in my collection. When it comes to pastels, I usually find it doesn't have the greatest opacity or longevity and I'm happy to report that this little watercolor story does have really, really great longevity. With that said, if you're someone that's looking for like a light pastel moment, this could be a really good palette for you, but I am beyond excited to see what their next release is. I'm hoping that there could be some blushes or perhaps highlighters in the works because that would be fucking amazing. So uh, Game Beauty, get on it. So let's move on to the Radiance Boosting Face Palette from Wayne Goss. This baby retails for $45. This is a contour and bronzer powder duo that gives you everything you need to shape, sculpt, and boost your skin's youthful radiance with a natural, healthy looking finish. I have it in the shade Light Gold, which is described as soft beige gold with cool undertones and light taupe with cool undertones. I'm gonna cut to the chase. This is fucking fantastic. I fucking love this thing. I'm fucking obsessed with it. I cannot stop fucking wearing it. And I fucking love you, Wayne Goss. <laughs> it's a lot of fucks. I am fucking sorry. <laughs> but I'm fucking not. It's tough to find a cool tone option. It really is. Most bronzers are very, very warm. Contours, I feel like there is a better chance of finding a cool tone one, but there's also a really good chance of looking pretty fucking dead. So it's nice to find something that is cool tone and makes me look alive as opposed to dead, which I know my namesake, bleh. I'm a real boy, okay? I wanna be alive. First and foremost, I wanna say thank you so much to Tara Lynn. I love her. She is amazing. She actually passed this on to me because she was like, bitch, this is too light for me. This will work for your uncooked chicken ass. And she's right, it fucking does. What I love about this duo is how well they work together. They have a great longevity. They last all fucking day. And most importantly, they do not pull orange on me. Neither one of these products make me look dead or a Cheeto. That's fabulous. Both powders apply effortlessly and beautifully to the face. They are not muddy, they are not patchy. Even if you do have a heavy hand like myself, you will not experience that fucking harsh line that's impossible, impossible to blend out. This product doesn't sit on top of the skin. It melts beautifully with the other products, especially when you're buffing. It just looks so fucking good. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I really love the contour side because it's, it's really truly a great light cool tone option, but I do love the bronzer too. The bronzer powder is very, very soft. I cannot stress enough that it does not pull Cheeto on me. Instead, it just gives my skin a very healthy glow. And again, same as like the contour side, you could kind of really go in heavy handed. You're not going to experience harshness. This is probably one of the more natural looking bronzers that I have in my collection. And ever since discovering this product, I pretty much wear this shit every fucking day. And I love it for my Zoom meetings because oftentimes my coworker will say to me, Oh my God, Teresa, you got color? Did you go outside? And I say, <laughs> Oh, you silly bastard. You know I'm terrified of the outside. No, this is Wayne Goss. He's making it look like I have it together. <laughs> I love it. I love giving the illusion that I'm one with society. I really do. But jokes aside, this is probably one of my favorite products of this year, actually. And I think if you look like me and you are looking for a cool tone option, this could really work for you. Of course, I cannot speak about the other two shades, so 
I don't know, but for the lightest one, if you look like a see-through fish, rest assured, you're gonna be good. Now, do you need it? I mean, technically you don't need anything. Nobody needs shit. But if you were a cool tone boy like me, this is a great option to get. And as for the price point, I think it's fair because you're getting two products. So yeah, this is definitely on my list of favorites for this year. This is fucking great and I am just, I need to buy a backup of this because if this goes away, I will lose my mind and take everybody with me. Next. The final product we're gonna be talking about today is from Patrick Ta, and this is the Major Sculpt Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. This product retails for $38, and it's described as a modern way to sculpt the face. This cream and powder contouring duo effortlessly shapes and defines for a beautiful dimensional look. So I got it in the shade Chief Statuesque, which I believe is, no, it is the lightest shade possible. Yeah, you can't get any lighter than this. <laughs> What is interesting about this product is that you have the cream contour on top and then you have the powder bronzer on the bottom. I'll be honest, I really wanted to like this more. It's not a bad product, but it's not my favorite product either. It's kind of like in the middle. And I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to undertones. So if you are looking for cool tones like myself, this is probably not gonna be the best option for you because I find that this kind of leans a little bit too warm for my liking. Still, the formula is quite nice, but it's just a little bit too warm. Again, I don't hate it. It's just a product that I know I'm not gonna see myself reaching for very often, if at all, probably actually, which is sad. The cream contour is fine. It's very, very, very much on the light side. I always find myself having to build up the product just to see any little bit of color. So while this does blend very easily, at times it can blend into nothing, which is really upsetting. So you have to kind of go back and forth to build up product just to make sure that it's there. But I will say though, that when you do put the cream contour down, it doesn't pick up any of the products underneath, which is fucking fabulous. I just wish the color was just a little bit deeper, but mm. I wonder if I would have got the second one, if that would have worked for me better. But when I look at the swatches, it looks more warm. So it's like, eh. Not really what I'm looking for. When it comes to the bronzer, I feel like it overpowers the contour immediately. So when you do actually achieve some color with the contour, by adding that powder, it just takes it away. I don't even see the little dimension anymore. It's just straight up bronzer. And being that it's kind of on the warmer side, I don't know, it just kind of looks a little bit weird on me. It probably looks fine, but in my head, I look like Snooki from Jersey Shore. Like when the world just met Snooki, okay? Not the Snooki now, like back then, okay? When she was orange, like permanently orange. <laughs> The bronzer quality, however, is good. It's pigmented, it's easy to blend, it's just overpowering. It does have great longevity, and I didn't experience any weird patchiness or anything like that. Again, it's just too warm for me. Maybe if the contour was a little bit more pigmented, maybe the bronzer wouldn't feel so overpowering, but eh, it is what it is, right? Unfortunately, I really haven't found a great way for it to work. Like, I like it, but I'm not in love with it, I don't know. I don't hate what I see, it's just not what I want. Actually, you know what's funny now thinking about it? When I would use any cream blush with the cream contour and I would skip out on the powder bronzer, still the cream blush actually kind of overtook the contour. So maybe it's just like a weak formula. I like the consistency of it and I like how initially it looks, but then when you just start to work it in, it's just, it's just not there. It's just not strong enough. <laughs> anyway, so this wasn't my favorite product, unfortunately. I think if I had to pick obviously between the two, I'm going to go with the Wayne Goss one. I just really love the fucking results of this. It's just, I just, I love you. <laughs> you not so much. I'm sorry. I wanted to like this more, but uh, bleh. But again, we eat our mistakes on this channel, so I'm gonna keep trying to make it work, much like that stupid fucking Gucci bronzer. Anyway, now I wanna hear from y'all. Let me know down below if you picked up any of these products, if you love them, if you hate them, if you have a product that you want me to test out and try out, let me know because I love hearing from y'all. And with that said, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, it's free, and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, to all my beautiful, wonderful patron bubbies. Thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, but also kind of fun though too. Garbage boat afloat, I couldn't do without you. I love your adorable little delicious faces and um, I can't wait to gobble them all up. If you wanna know what is currently on my face along with where to get my podcast, my merch, my boobity blop blop, everything will be listed in the description box below. And I'll see you little crustaceans later. Bye.